The National Junior Disability Championships are taking place in St. Louis this week, and one young man's accomplishments have inspired many of the participants. He can also be a role model for us all. Cameron Clapp believes all things are possible. It's not about the disability. It's about coming out here and trying your very hardest. And Cameron is living proof of it. He survived a serious accident at the age of 15. A freight train, 2001, took my, my right arm and both of my legs uh, above the knees. The loss of three limbs did not stop his dreams. I became a stronger person from that. That metamorphosis took place. I am who I am today. He not only learned to walk again, he found the strength to be an athlete again. It's not what happens to you that matters most. It's what you do about it. I had to get, get out of my comfort zone, you know. Um, but I knew that they were goals that I'd set. And I was, I was going to do whatever it takes, you know, to achieve that goal. I was always very active. And today I still am, you know. It's, 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 it's just it's a blessing. Cameron's accomplishments have inspired little seven-year-old Cody. And not only had he not met people that were like him, but people that were active mm. and doing things still, running and jumping and swimming and anything else. They're, they're making it happen, you know. They're, they're creating their, their, you know, their life before their very own eyes. And while Cameron is in St. Louis for the National Junior Disability Championships, he wants to motivate the disabled and the able alike. His message is simple. Impossible is an option, not a fact. We all have an adversity. It's an opportunity to make something from it. He really is a great guy to meet. He's also an actor, too. He was on the, the Earl show not too long ago, so uh, he's getting out there. What an inspiration. Amazing. Thanks Rennie, for sharing thanks. that, Rennie. No doubt, watching a ball player hit a home run is exciting. But seeing Francis Howell freshman Ariel Liker compete in archery is amazing. I think Robin Hood would even be impressed. 14-year-old Ariel Liker has cerebral palsy. It limits the use of her right arm, yet she can shoot a bow and arrow. Then I started seeing her do things that most people thought uh, a one-handed child couldn't do, yeah. and I encouraged her to do that. As they say, where there's a will, there's a way. My fingers aren't strong enough to pull it back with um, uh, the bow like that, so I, I use my teeth, and it um, works just as well. Because of her cerebral palsy, she has to figure things out that you and I take for granted every day. Ariel clenches her teeth on a piece of a dog leash that her mom attached to the bow. I'm completely amazed because uh, she's shooting from the middle of the bow. She doesn't, she can't really shoot through one eye looking down the string, I think, like most archers do. Once she mastered her unique form, well, hitting the target wasn't so tough. Trying to focus on the bullseye or uh, a, a smaller point on the target. How many bullseyes have we hit? Uh, too many to count. Now she competes all across the nation. Ariel has become quite the athlete. I do uh, track, field, swimming, archery, and uh, for competition, and I do sled hockey wow. and tennis for fun. So there's no holding you back? No. Conquering archery has given Ariel the confidence to take on just about anything. I'm extremely proud of her. I couldn't be happier. I tell you, it is so amazing to go out there and watch not just Ariel, but all the athletes compete. It's been a lot of fun. This DASA, week. the Disabled Athletes mm -hmm. Sports Association, Kelly Bowman, they do such a great job out there. Rennie, thanks. What a great story. Traveled from all over the United States, but some athletes compete for the Disabled Athletes Sports Association, a local nonprofit organization out of St. Peter's. And for the athletes of DASA, today was a day of extreme highs. At the NJDC, 17 year old Troy High School junior George Anglin shattered his personal qualifying javelin throw by more than three meters. Oh, it was amazing just to, just to feel it. it. Three meters over my qualifying record. It was amazing. Cottleville's Ariel Liger had a pretty darn good day herself. It went pretty well. I said a couple uh, personal bests in javelin and uh, shot put. But Ariel was equally excited for her DASA teammate Kelly McFadden, who set a personal best in the discus throw, then surpassed that one on her next throw. It, it was really cool because I've been trying to help her. I was 
kind of coaching her, and she did really good. Not a bad day considering the discus is not the St. Peter's native's strongest event. It was amazing, I guess. Plus, it was surprising that I set a record. Now that I set a record, I hope I do again. But the one set of eyes filled with tears watching these kids break records is that of their coach, Lori Voss. They may not tell you that they set their, their hopes high. They all dream big. They all want to go to the Paralympics. They all want those things. But these athletes are taking much more away from this event than personal records. Good leadership skills and to not be uh, too low when you don't get the best you get. You just keep trying. It taught me that I can do a lot of stuff that I didn't think I could do. I guess meeting other people from like different countries and that stuff maybe. Kelly McFadden started competing as a swimmer but will compete in more track events on dry land this week. George Anglin was one of three St. Louis kids to compete for Team USA in Switzerland at the International Wheelchair Amputee Games. And Ariel Liker is tagged by her coaches as, as potentially being DASA's next Paralympic. Paralympic champion. For News 11, I'm Kurt LaBelle. If you want to be inspired, this is the place to come. This pool is full of kids who have beat the odds, but today, most of them are only concerned with beating their best swim time. Good job. Here, it's not about what you can't do, it's about what you can. You have to qualify, you have to beat a certain time. It's just like Michael Phelps. It is it exactly like that, except if you can't use your legs, you don't use them. The National Junior Disability Championship is a competition between the best of the best from North America. To come to the national event, they have to qualify at regional events, so they have to achieve qualifying times just to be invited to come and participate in any of these events this week. It's all the same rules as Michael Phelps has, and you know, track is you know just like Jackie Joyner, Kirsty. I mean, all of those rules are all applied to these kids. It's just um, they might swim a little differently, but they have to follow the rules. Athletes in this competition live with a disability, but it's easy to see it doesn't stop them from anything. Physically disabled, visually impaired, or deaf or hard of hearing, and they're all cognitively age appropriate. So at the furthest level, many of these kids will go on to the Paralympics. Not having legs may seem like a huge obstacle for most people, but for these athletes, it's just another hurdle toward achieving greatness. And this is the big time. You, you make it here, you're one of the best in the nation. 16-year-old Ryan Minx was born with spina bifida. My dad uh, was told that I would never walk. I would never be able to watch speak. And this athlete, who now talks up a storm, just beat his fastest swim time by 10 seconds, winning him the gold medal in his division. And it just feels alive. I feel, I feel like a champion. <laughs> As a baby, Cody had his legs amputated because they grew without shin or knee bones. But when this seven-year-old is in the pool, it's hard to tell. It feels good. I swim fast. He's as fast as a fish, and he proves to be an inspiration in and out of the water. He actually works with Challenged Athletes Foundation to show other athletes and other military members around the United States that when you have an injury or you have something happen, it's not a setback. It's just something that challenges you and makes you pride another way to do things that you want to do to stay active. Ten-year-old Andy has one leg shorter than the other, but that hasn't stopped him yet. Today, he finishes with four gold medals. I feel free, sort of. Just in the water, you can do whatever you want, pretty much. No matter which athlete you talk with or what inspiring story you hear, the message remains the same. Hard work, perseverance, and determination always pays off in the end. I want to do it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not even bungee job, I don't know. <laughs> I'm Ashley Weiss. I am the development director at Disabled Athlete Sports Association, which is a local nonprofit organization that has year-round sports programs for children who are physically disabled, visually impaired, deaf or hard of hearing. The National Junior Disability Championship has been going on for 26 years and it's in different parts of the country each year. This year it happens to be in St. Charles County and our swim events were held at the RecPlex and all of the other competitions are all held at St. Charles West High School. So when kids achieve the Paralympic standards, they actually have the opportunity to be put into the Paralympic system, and we might see some of these kids in London in 2012. Why am I here? Because I want to have fun and stuff. 
One metal. <laughs> Brendan's disabilities are cerebral palsy and he also has some uh, vision loss. And uh, he has participated in several sports activities with DASA, including soccer, basketball, and now track and field, which he is really excelling at. I'm Kelly McFadden and I'm here doing field events. I have epilepsy and hydrocephalus. Today I broke a record in discus, shot put, javelin, and long jump. Kelly likes to do sports and do things with other kids, but she doesn't really compete at school or on other teams, so DASA gives her an opportunity to really compete with and make friends, um, peers her own age, and she just has a lot of fun and she's really grown stronger since she's been doing it. It is 554. Our online web chat on KSDK.com this morning asks, who inspires you? Heidi found a story that should impress and inspire all of us, Heidi. Well, you know, the thing that I like most about this job is the people we get to meet. And no offense to anyone I've done a story with in the past 11 years, but the little guy you're about to meet has to be my favorite. Kids look at life a little differently. Something as simple as a fan is fun. However, this particular kid smiles constantly. Because I'm happy. Sure, you've met happy kids before, but none like Cody McCasland, a little guy who's not scared of anything. I don't think you're scared of anything. No. Except the roller coasters. Okay, minus that. But Cody's conquered much bigger bumps in the road. Well, when I was born, I was missing the fibula or tibula. So they had to amputate me and they gave me these legs. He makes it sound rather simple. His mom remembers things a little differently. They told my husband that he needed to prepare for Cody to die, that he was just not going to make it. And so he comes back into me and tells me, and I'm going, no, they're wrong. About 17 surgeries later, Cody was going strong. But there was still that problem with his legs. First probably month was just utter disbelief that they would cut a child's legs off. You just can't imagine that they would do that. I was somewhere around 15 months. Of course, Cody doesn't see his lack of legs as a problem at all. I swim, I hand cycle, I have a racing chair, and I play sled hockey. And he runs. I like these legs. You do? Yes. Why? Because I can bounce, 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 bounce. Maybe it's the legs, or maybe it's the sugar. Well, it helps me go fast. But most importantly, what Cody does is inspire everyone he meets, whether they have legs. Let's go watch a race. Or not. In September of this last fall, he was on the tractor and he fell. And when he fell, he got sucked underneath the brush hog. He meets and plays with kids like Colton Newman. He's only had his legs for two months. Pretty soon he'll get stubbies and running legs. But first we start off like at walking legs. And soldiers who are returning from the war. Well, when they come back for more, sometimes they they lost their legs. So I go tell them about my leg. It not only makes me proud, but it makes me feel like he's doing so much good in this world that I cannot do as good as he does, and, and it makes me want to be a better person. So he might be only seven years old, but he's off to a great start when it comes to making a huge difference in the world. Let's go, Cody! Is he not the most incredible kid you've ever seen? If he looks familiar, he's been on Ellen, Oprah, and Dateline, but I don't <laughs> think we will ever get tired of hearing his story. He is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. it, I mean, it makes you look at life in a whole different wow. light. Go Cody. Where does he live? He's from Texas, but he was Man. in town because, uh, of course, for those games, but then also um, Build-A-Bear brought him in as a huggable hero. Fantastic. We've just learned a lesson from a seven-year-old. <laughs>